This is perhaps one of the most anticipated releases for Natasha Denona, her Retro Glam Eyeshadow Palette. inspired by her mini retro palette this tiny friend that launched a couple years ago and I remember when it launched a lot of people were like wait a second we get a mini but there's not a companion because we're used to see Natasha Denona releasing first a regular size palette a midi size palette as this one and then a mini palette so everybody was like wait a second we want to see more of this color story and all oh, if she made us wait for a long time and this palette became available well first on Natasha Denona's website I will be leaving all the details where to find this palette the rest of my makeup absolutely everything will be on the description box below along with the links for your convenience but the last day of the Sephora holiday savings event lunch and if you are not yet subscribed to my channel and you have been watching me perhaps this is the first time or two three four times and you're just coming and going I highly suggest you to go ahead and subscribe to my channel make sure you ring the post notification bell not only because you don't want to miss any of my uploads but because I also post on my community tab whenever there is a new beauty makeup related release news etc and if you are not too much to be here on YouTube, but you're on Instagram, I will highly suggest you to go ahead and follow me on Instagram too. Hey, is Jacqueline is my handle because on my IG stories, I usually post, okay, there's a new launch, something came back in real stock, etc. So it is a really, really good way to stay in communication and stay on the know when things are dropping. Anyhow, my friends, to what you came for, this baby, the Retro Glam Eyeshadow Palette, a midi palette, 15 different shades, 24 months shelf life made in Italy it costs $69 and you have to see this beauty oh my goodness this is the first time that Natasha Denona uses on the design of a palette plexiglass and is to give this 3d effect to the palette hopefully you're able to see it right here and by the way if you see a little bit of change in lighting it is because I do film in natural light with a 4K camera. So hopefully this will give you the best representation of the product, how it looks in per if you were to be here with me in person, and obviously with the best filming quality, which is 4K. Now, this palette is a little bit thicker than, say, her other midi palettes, but it's just because you have the plexiglass. It's not because it's chunkier but it's just it has an extra layer because of the design and also on the back of the palette as you can tell it has a little pink holes where you can actually remove the eyeshadows or interchange them with other mini palettes from Natasha Denona and I think that's very fun mostly for those who are makeup artists or if you simply have a certain way that you like to arrange your eyeshadows that you feel more comfortable with you can do so too and get creative with it. Now, let's take a peek on the inside of this baby. It is, oh my gosh, stunning. Here you go. It is a mix of green, sage green, some kind of like deep forest greens, a little bit more of like a cool tone sign, some of pinky shades with a dash of warm in it. And there's a combination of different finishes between matte, metallics, cream to powders, creamy matte, and also her ultra sparkly eyeshadow, which is on this corner right over here. This is a fun palette and definitely retro vibes. Let's go ahead and get started with some swatches and I'm gonna be doing some looks. Claire is a metallic vintage rose with a silver shift. Jassy, a metallic dark cool brown. Oscar, a metallic light medium vintage champagne. Evergreen, a matte cream powder medium dark sage. Marlene, metallic light medium sage green. Maxi, metallic medium dark warm taupe. Sage is a matte medium sage green. Holly is a matte light neutral rose. Fringe is a matte pastel sage green. Faye is a matte medium muted clay. Flatter sparkling light champagne pink. Lucy, matte light limestone. Palladian is a metallic pastel sage green. Belle, a matte medium dusty rose. And Oz, metallic medium dark muted forest green. There we have it. These are all the 15 different shades. Let's just start with the first eyeshadow look and a BK Beauty 201 brush. I'm going to go to the shade Holly. I'm taking this shade and applying it above the crease. 
Okay, Sonia G Flatty Finer. I'm gonna go to the shade Belle. And I'm taking this shade and applying it right on the crease. And dusting it off on the outer third. Sonia G Builder and the shade Flare. And I'm taking this shade and applying it from the middle all the way to the outer third. Using the opposite side of the brush, I'm gonna go to the shade Maxi. And I'm taking the shade on the outer third of the eye leaf. I'm just diffusing it. Smith 253 brush, and I'm gonna go to the shade Flatter. And I'm gonna take this shade and apply in an inner corner all the way until it meets with the other. Pinky shade. On my lower lash line, I'm gonna go with the shade Bell. And I'm just gonna go ahead and diffuse it. With a Sonia G Flat Definer, I'm gonna go again to the shade Maxi. And I'm taking this shade and I'm just making it a little bit deeper in this area. I went ahead and applied some falsies. Also, I added a little bit of bronzer, blush, lipstick. Most of things are from Dasha Denona, but again, all the products will be in the description box below. And this is the look. Now, I feel like it's missing something, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go for this green coal palladium. And I'm just gonna apply it right on the center. It kind of mixes that fusion of the green with the pink. I feel that this looks super pretty. I'm gonna redo a little bit the liner. I'm just gonna retouch the liner here. And a little bit of this M Cosmetics mascara. And there you have it. This is the final look. All right, now let's go for the second look. I'm gonna start first with the shade Lucy and a Beauty 212 brush. And I'm gonna take this shade and apply it above the crease. What a beautiful shade. This and that shade all over the lid. And so pretty. Bikini Beauty Mini Booster and the shade Fade. And I'm taking this shade and applying it right on the crease. Going with the same shade, I'm just gonna pack it on a little bit more on that outer third. Refer number one brush, and I'm gonna go to the shade Jassy. I'm gonna take this shade and apply it on the outer third. Then a GB Lip Pro in the shade Oscar. And I'm taking this shade. Oh, so beautiful. Applying it on my third to the middle. Such a pretty shade. I'm not 100% if to go with the shade Marlene or the shade Flutter. The middle of the eye leaf. Shades, both shades are so pretty. I'm gonna integrate this shade here right in the middle. So I decided to go with Marlene. So pretty, super delicate. I mean, definitely you could have gone with this shade, but I feel like we can take it a little bit more full time too. And this refer number 28 brush and the shade Lucy. I'm taking this shade and applying it on my lower lash line. Sonia G flat definer and the shade Jassy. And I'm taking this shade and applying it on the lower lash line, but more on the outer third. Refer 03 brush and the shade Flatter. Taking this shade on my inner corner and also on my brow bone. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side too. Okay friends, lashes are on and this is my second eyeshadow look. 
I feel that it's very sophisticated. It has that hint of green, but mostly it's taupe and champagne. So it's nothing like too, too much. It's nothing like, oh my gosh, look at all these colors together. I think both looks turn out really, really pretty. And very elegant, very much for the season. Let's go now for the third eyeshadow look. I'm going with a Sonia G Classic Crease. I'm gonna go to this shade called Fringe. And I'm gonna take it above the crease. It does have good pigmentation. I was thinking perhaps this will not give me enough pigment, but it does. Sonia G Worker Pro and the shade Sage, which is a matte shade. I'm taking this shade and applying it on the outer third. This is a beautiful shade. Oh, I'm so in the shade. It's so pretty. And it doesn't look dusty. Refer 13 brush and evergreen. And I'm just taking this shade and applying it on the outer third. It's beautiful with all this area. Synergy Builder Pro and the shade Oz. It's taking a ratio kind of like almost towards the middle of the eyelid. And it creates kind of a little bit of a gradient. Smith 253 brush and the shade Marlin. I'm taking this shade and applying it from inner corner all the way to the middle of the eyelid. Oh, that's so pretty. I see. I see I'm minty. Then I go to the shade Palladium with my finger. I'm just going to apply it right on the center of the eyelid. Such a beautiful shade, super icy. Refer O3 brush in the shade Flatter. Taking it on the inner corner and also I'm just gonna drag it and just kind of like create a line, like an arch that is gonna start to fade away as it goes on the upper side. Taking also Flatter on my brow bone. Going to the shade Lucy with a Sonia G Mini Booster. I'm just going to use this shade as to buff the edges. BK Beauty 204 brush and the shade Fade. I'm taking it on the lower lash line. Sonia G Flat Definer and Evergreen. And I'm taking this shade and applying it very close to the lower lash line too. Going next with the shade Jassy. I'm taking it on the outer third. Just want to make it a little bit more Okay. And here you have it. This is my third and final look with the Retro Glam Eyeshadow Palette by Natasha Denona. Going into comparisons, I mean, we have to compare it to the mini Retro Palette, which was the inspiration for this palette. And I have gone ahead and swatched the five different shades. I have gone ahead and swatched the five shades right over here. And definitely, there are no repeats. I mean, we can see the inspiration, definitely, but the good thing is, again, there are no repeats between the Mini Retro and the Retro Glam palette. Now, I do have a palette, though, that has this kind of same color story, but it's just a quad, and it is by Tom Ford Soleil Elou. One of my favorite palettes with this palette. I mean, it's just a quad and you can create the most mesmerizing looks. Now this palette is not available anymore. It was part of the holiday collection. It was 2020 or 2019. Just gonna go ahead and give it a quick swatch. Icy tones, beautiful. But all of these shades are kind of like satin borderline metallic shades that you can use it wet or dry. If you use it dry, they look more satiny. If you use them wet, then you get a metallic kind of finish. I have gone ahead and swatch Soleil Elune right on this side. And as you can tell, there's a little bit of that vibe, but the tones are not exactly the same. In fact, this one has a very gorgeous, cool tone, pinky that, oh, it's just, <laughs> it's just so stunning. To be honest, I wish 
Natasha Denona will have then this shade on her palette. Just saying, just saying. But other than that, I mean, the only two shades perhaps are these two right here that are a little bit alike, but again, not exactly the same. Other than those, and going back to Natasha Denona, I have here the pastel palette, and I think the only shade will be Mint Frost, and I want to compare it to Margin. This one is more pastel. I'm going to compare it no matter what. So this one is Mint Frost, and this one is Brisk. This one, Adriatic, is a lot more punchy. It doesn't have anything to do with this Retro Glam palette. So here you have it. Right next to Martin, this is deeper. Do you see it? And then here it is the other shade, which is more pastel. I'm just gonna swatch it right next to this is fringe. So this one right here is fringe from retro, and the one from pastel is brisk. This one is brisk. So those are the only two from the pastel palette. In fact, like, if we look at just the creams and a little bit, like, even this kind of, like, melony tone, it's kind of like this is the vibrant sister, the one that wants to go parties all the time, and this one is the more, you know, sophisticated, calm, put together <laughs> kind of sister. Now let's do a quick comparison with Retro Palette. Completely, super, super different. I love this palette. Don't get me wrong, I know a lot of people were like, wait a second, but this does, doesn't have much to do with the mini retro, but it's a gorgeous palette nonetheless. And if there's anything to compare, oh my gosh. <laughs> Perhaps let's do this shade. Mm, this and this shade. You know, they, there's more warmth to them. Um, do it right here that's deeper mm. yeah that's deeper too and then this shade right here I'm just gonna put it right here that's more brown in tone so definitely retro doesn't have anything to do with retro glam and in terms of the glam palette again the same thing happens I think it's mostly looking at the taupey tones more than anything, like this shade, this shade, also this matte shade over here, perhaps. This one is way, way lighter. Um, perhaps this shade. Let me just swatch these ones first. Uh, it's too deep. That's more brown. More beige. Okay, these ones, they are actually a little bit more alike. Not the same though, but just, just a little bit more alike. And then I'm gonna swatch this shade here. And I wanna compare it to the shade Flatter. Now, for Flatter, it's another formula. This one is a metallic formulation. Flatter is more like a sparkly, shiny formula. And the last one will be this beauty, the 28 pound palette, green, brown, eyeshadow palette. Wow, this palette. So pretty, majestic, so heavyweight too. <laughs> and this one to me has a lot in terms of like a retro glam kind of vibe. In terms of the shades, I feel like the shades here are a little bit deeper. The green tones are deeper and the, some of them even a little bit more emerald while the Retro Glam keeps itself sage and toned down and cool tone. I'm just gonna swatch a few so you can see them. Um, and then you have again the taupes perhaps are the ones that you'll find some similarities. I'm gonna swatch, see this one right here too, no. Yeah, there's a little bit more of like an emerald kind of tonality to it. So I'm just gonna switch this one here. Again, we can find these kind of tones like in a lot of palettes for sure. Anything that's taupey. I'm just gonna swatch it just, just so you can see. 
that you can find some greens, but again, other finishes, other undertones. Yes. Now to my final thoughts, starting first for the packaging. I love this plexiglass, the design, the 3D effect. Honestly, very retro vibe. Absolutely in love. So gorgeous. Now, in terms of the color story, I'm honestly a person that do not enjoy too much greens. Except, oh, I found one that I didn't, didn't swatch. It's this new one that I had been so in love with. <laughs> this is by Tom Ford. It's the one in velour khaki. A lot deeper. Way, way deeper. There's no point in even into swatching it. It's like dark forest kind of green. But anyhow, <laughs> I'm not a person that usually goes for green eyeshadows on a day-to-day -day basis. So to me, this is taking me a little bit out of my comfort zone. But what I like about it is that although we see these pops of greens right here, we also have some neutral taupes, making of this palette a lot more wearable than what it seems like. I mean, if you count, then you have all these taupe, 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 taupe. They do have green undertones, but it's not too much. I think it's a very well-balanced palette between the greens, the taupes, and then these little pops of pinky, kind of a strawberry kind of shades. It, those pink shades right here are the ones that give that retro vibe. I really enjoy that the shades are not chalky. I'm talking about specifically on the matte shades. I thought for a minute that perhaps it was going to be a very much of like a chalky kind of green and that's something that I'm not going for. But to my surprise, and I mean we all know Natasha Denona, the formulation right here is beautiful. That How it translates on the eyelids, this shade and this shade, are exactly the same as you see in the palette and that is just spectacular if I had to do some tweaks to this palette it will be these two shades although they are different they are just a little too close to my likes and I wish I could have seen instead one deep brown cool tone matte eyeshadow I think there's one actually here on the glam palette yeah, this shade over here, something along those lines, just to ground the palette a little bit more or even a deeper matte green shade. Because we do have this green shade, but it's not that deep. It doesn't give a lot of depth to the palette. So I find out myself trying to go to this shade, Jassy, to make it a little bit deeper. Not that you have to, but I think that would have been a little bit nicer. And another thing are these shades, the pinky shades. Although I understand the concept of the palette, I personally will use them completely separately from the green shades. To me, although yes, it's a retro and that's what it, it's meant for, to give this retro vibe, for some reason, I rather... Like, for example, when she came out with the actual retro palette, I like this kind of tone. Like It's more, it's not so pink, it's not so peach, it's very, very neutral. Yeah, it's more neutral. Even, in fact, it's not even peachy at all. These ones, they tend, I mean, they lean a lot more pinky in tone. And that's something that, I mean, I'm not too convinced about it for this palette. And if so, I love this kind of shade. This shade is beautiful. You see, it looks dark on the palette, but look how it translates on the finger. And then when you put it on, it has, oh, it has this beautiful sheen. It reminds me, if you have the Westman Atelier highlighter in Peau de Peche, it's just that kind of shade. So it's a little bit more neutral. That's the only thing that I wish these shades over here would have been a little bit more neutral. Although I understand the concept. And like I said, I will use them no matter what. But I will use them mostly with this kind of shade, with the taupey shades, with these two shades right here. Not too much combining them with the green shades. That's just me personally. Now, I love the versatility of this palette too because you can do an all monochromatic eyeshadow look 
with the green tones like I did today, or just use the taupey tones alone, or just the pink tones alone. So there's a lot of things that you can do with this palette. I really love, like for example, this quad right here, or using just these six shades over here too. I mean, there's so much that you can do about it, and it's just a beautiful palette. It's very unexpected, and I love that you can create even those icy tones ideal for winter time. To me, definitely this palette, I don't know why it was lunch right now. I assume perhaps because of the leak of the palette, there were a lot of pictures out there already in so many different places that it was completely spoiled. I think perhaps this could have been her Valentine's or a spring palette, perhaps because of the tones but at the same time with these icy tones i feel that is bringing us a little bit of that winter kind of vibe you know like forest cold winter weather type of theme which is gorgeous and once again in terms of performance just as we know natasha denona fantastic if i had a little bit of fallout it has been with this shade jassy and also with the shade flatter i will suggest to use either your fingers or use a brush that is a little bit wet to apply it because there, this shade, because it has so much sparkles, it can be a little bit crumbly. It's gorgeous, but it can be just a little bit crumbly. Anyhow, my friends, this makes it for this video. I hope that you found it helpful, informative. If you haven't done so yet, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring that post notification bell so you miss any of my uploads. It will be amazing if you can come and follow me on my Instagram and my TikTok. My TikTok handle is a little bit different than my Instagram and YouTube channel, which are hey is Jacqueline and TikTok. I'm Hey Jacqueline. And if you like this video, do not forget to give it a thumbs up, share with family and friends. And if you are not done supporting this girl, I will be leaving a couple other videos right here. Bye-bye.